everyone and welcome to worship with the Greenville Presbyterian Church congregation online. So very glad that you're worshiping with us on this Sunday morning. Remember please that our food drop is going to be the 14th of this month, which is a Monday, and it will be from 12 to 1 and not from 12 to 2. The time has changed from 12 to 1. Hear the word of God as it comes to us this morning from the book of Matthew, chapter 13, verses 1 to 9, and 30 to 33. That same day, Jesus left the house and went to the lakeside where he sat down to teach. The crowd that gathered around him was so large that he got into a boat and sat in it while the crowd stood on the shore. And he used parables to tell them many things. Once, he said, there was a man who went out to sow. And as he scattered the seed in the field, some of it fell along the path, and the birds came and ate it up. Some of it fell on rocky ground, where there was little soil, and the seed soon sprouted because the soil wasn't deep. But when the sun came up, it burned the young plants because the roots had not grown deep enough. The plant soon dried up, and some of the seed fell upon in thorn bushes which grew up and choked the plants, but some seeds fell in good soil and the plants bore grain. Some had 100 grains, others 60, and others 30. And Jesus concluded, listen then, if you have ears. Jesus told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like this, he said. A man takes a mustard seed and sows it in his field. It is the smallest of all seeds, but when it grows up, it is the biggest of all plants. And it becomes a tree so big that birds come and make their nest in its branches. And Jesus told them still another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like this. A woman takes some yeast and mixes it with a bushel of flour until the whole batch of dough rises. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Come as the fire and burn. Come as the wind and cleanse. Come as the light and reveal. Convict, convert, and consecrate until we belong completely to you. Amen. You're sitting around a campfire with Jesus and his disciples. They have lived together, traveled together, preached and eaten together for quite a while. On this evening, they have a simple meal of fish and bread. And there is a lull in the conversation, and one could imagine Thomas speaking up and saying, Master, you know, I tend to be a little pessimistic. But tonight I am afraid we must face some facts. Increasingly, we are being kept out of the synagogues. The most powerful religious leaders in the country are against you. Recently, we heard rumors that King Herod wants you dead. Judas tells me that we have seen a decline in contributions because the controversy around you is getting out of hand. So while it's true that many people still come to see you, mostly they come because they want a miracle cure or are just curious and, to sh and they show no commitment to you at all. So after much hard work, what do we have to show for it? You know, we aren't exactly this booming success. Well, have you ever felt that way? Aren't there times when we wonder if our prayers get above the ceiling in our house? We wonder if our church makes any difference in our community. We wonder if our faith is any more than just wishful thinking. And if we have any real Christian influence. A herd of buffalo was grazing in a range when the deer and the antelope play. And suddenly this cowboy comes riding up jumps off his horse and gets right into the face of a buffalo and says, 
You are the sorriest excuse for a buffalo I ever saw. Your fur is dirty and matted and you stink. He jumps on his horse and rides away. The buffalo turns to his neighbor and says, I think I just heard a discouraging word. All of us have dealt with discouragement, and so did Jesus' disciples. When Jesus sensed that their morale was down and they were discouraged, he told them three parables that are recorded in chapter 13 of Matthew. These parables tell us the kingdom of God has something in common with kudzu of all things, a weed that you and I can find everywhere. Nothing grows like kudzu. It's the only plant whose growth is measured in miles per hour. Remember the story of Jack and the beanstalk? That vine was kudzu. We Christians are part of a kudzu kingdom. In the parable of the sower, verses 1 to 9, we hear about a farmer scattering seed. The seed represents the word of God. Some seed falls in a pathway and is eaten by birds. That seed represents the hearts who receive the gospel but are then snatched away by the devil. Some seed falls on rocky ground and they have shallow roots. This represents those who receive the gospel gladly, but when persecution or trouble comes, they drop out quickly. Other seed falls among thorns and is choked out. This represents those persons who receive the gospel, but later the cares of the world and the lure of wealth chokes out the gospel. But then, said Jesus, some seed falls on good ground and has spectacular growth. The parable we are looking at can be both encouraging and discouraging because the first thing it says is that 75% of the people who hear the gospel will not become long-term Christians. And that's a lot of people. That is really discouraging. But the other 25% who become committed believers are so amazingly productive that the entire world is changed through them. Now, look at the mustard seed in verses 31 and 32. Jesus said that the kingdom of God is like a mustard seed. Even though it is one of the smallest seeds, it produces one of the largest plants. This means that the kingdom of God that often looks small and vulnerable grows like kudzu. Some years ago in Charlotte, North Carolina, the Ministerial Association decided not to support a citywide revival because they thought the invited evangelist, according to some, was not very sophisticated. But a Presbyterian Sunday school teacher ignored the Ministerial Association and encouraged his students to attend. In response to his teacher, a lanky son of a dairy farmer attended the revival. There he surrendered his heart to Christ. The whole world has heard this farmer's son name, Billy Graham. No one remembers the name of the Sunday school teacher. That's the way it is with the kingdom of God. Tiny, unassuming beginnings are blessed with glorious results. Now look at verse 33, the parable of the yeast and leaven. Leaven was a little piece of dough kept over from a previous baking of bread. Since it was not refrigerated, it gradually fermented. This meant that yeast of leaven was produced for the next baking of bread. Only a tiny amount of fermented dough was necessary to produce 40 or 50 pounds of bread. However, unleavened bread is utterly tasteless, but the more you chew, the bigger it gets. But if you add just a tiny bit of leaven, out pops a McDonald's biscuit. What a huge difference difference a tiny bit of yeast makes. Jesus used these examples to make powerful points. 
Just as a tiny bit of leaven can transform 50 pounds of bread, a few committed Christians can transform society. Back in the 1960s, Martin Luther King Jr. led a momentous march between Selma and Montgomery, Alabama. On a bridge which has now become famous, they confronted Sheriff Clark and hundreds of police. Turn back, Clark shouted. We've come too far to turn back now, said King. If you don't turn back, we are going to bash in your head, said Clark. King responded with, if you hit me, I will love you. If you kick me, I will love you. If you kill me, the last words out of my mouth will be, I love you. Clark's forces charged with their clubs and dogs, and it appeared that the marchers were routed and beaten. But television carried the images around the world, and soon the verdict was clear. Through those marchers, the civil rights movement had won the hearts of America. You see, when a Christian stands firm for faith and principle, God delivers results. Isn't it strange how the kingdom works? One committed Christian can become the leaven to change a whole society. The message from the Lord through all three parables is this. Christians never give up. They never despair, and they never think small. The kingdom of God is like kudzu. It often has humble beginnings, but then produces huge growth and transforming influence. Paul knew this when he said, So let us now grow weary in doing what is right, for we will reap at harvest time if we do not give up. This comes from Galatians 6, 9. Bill Hinson is the former of what I think is still the largest Methodist church in the world, First Methodist of Houston, Texas. When Bill was a college student, he was invited to preach on a Sunday in a rural church in South Georgia. Georgia. It was a hot and very steamy September morning. All through his sermon, he was distracted by a barefoot boy in the front row who kept swinging his legs back and forth. Even before the sermon was over, Bill was thinking, this message is a lose. After the service, that same 10-year-old Donnie invited Bill to have lunch with his family. Well, when he sat down to eat with them, he had a delightful lunch. And then Bill drove back to school. A few weeks later, he went to his mailbox and found a fat envelope which jingled when he shook it. It was from Donnie and contained 57 cents in change and a note. And the note said, Dear Brother Bill, I'm sending you my egg money to help you go to school to become a better preacher. Bill called Donnie's father and told him he was sending the money back because he said, I just can't take it. And the father said, Don't do that. Donnie is taking better care of his chickens than ever and he is sending you every bit of his profit, and he is going to do it until you graduate. Well, Donnie is now fully grown and a successful businessman, and occasionally he still sees Bill. Bill then said there were times back in seminary when it took that letter from Donnie to help me pray, and I would pray. Lord, help me be worthy of this gift. And isn't that how the kingdom of God works? The pastor of the largest Methodist church in the world got his boost from something as small as a 10-year-old's egg money. Never give up. Never despair. Never think small. Let us pray. Lord, there are times in our life when we want nothing more than to give up. There are times when we despair. And it's easy, easy, Lord, to think small, to think just what we can, can, can conceive. Pour down your courage and strength upon us right now at this moment. We have more courage than we think. 
Help us in times of despair to remember to turn to you for strength and give us eyes to see what you see. We pray this morning also for the doctors and nurses and support personnel in hospitals, men and women ENTs who work with COVID patients. We pray for the patients themselves and especially for those on respirators and we lift up to you the families of those who have lost loved ones to this disease. And on this Memorial Day weekend, we lift up to you the men and women who have sacrificed their lives protecting our country's freedom and the freedom of other countries around the world. We lift up to you our active duty troops, our veterans, and our veteran amputees. They are neither suckers nor losers. Mm -hmm.